r slash no sleep posted by you slash like i did check out authors subreddit r slash like i did death occurs far too often in my town and the people don't care our people are accustomed to death while you have to be if it occurs so unnaturally regularly not only to the elderly but simply in general mourning is done discreetly and often only by the closest kin when you grow up knowing what decomposed flesh smells like you get used to it as morbid as it might sound and i'm not saying someone drops dead every day our town would have shrunk significantly if that was the case no there are rather deadly periods if you are lucky you won't be actively involved in one usually if members of your family have been in the past you won't get the same fate although it does mean you were raised by traumatized people which isn't necessarily better depending on your preferences now of course you could move away many have done so in the past but it doesn't shield you death is omnipresent and not bound to borders at least not when it comes to drenfield here it is bound to your blood and genes it's not a curse not technically although it definitely feels like one it's the consequences of a promise made a long time ago a time in which every single child and baby in drenfield became awfully sick without a warning and without any exceptions an entire generation would have died in a matter of a week and there was no doctor that could find a solution to the epidemic they were facing until the hunter came that's what we call him even today even now that we live in a much more progressed time the hunter came and promised to heal all the children if the people of dranfield made one promise when the time came they would join him and hunt at random whenever it was necessary a number of people would become hunters usually not more than a handful and a few more people would be hunted and well considering i introduced all this by telling you how accustomed we are to death i suppose you can imagine what happens then I realize it all sounds like massive bullshit and it probably is to a logical thinking person to the people of this place it is the only way they believe to save future generations and live together healthy and happy as long as it's not hunting season because back then the hunter didn't only save all those children he made sure no child of drenfield blood would ever become sick again even adults hardly ever feel unwell people don't even catch a cold and now you might wonder if it's a coincidence, if the hunter really existed or if this is a fairy tale the townspeople have grown so used to that it became some sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. Though the custom of hunting and killing to stay healthy would be some hell of a placebo. Either way, most people are happy with the chances they get, the hunters that are picked are always more than ready. The prey tries to run but they never get far. Other than the occasional loss of members, life really isn't too shabby here though. Small towns tend to be boring but not Dranfield. There is always something to do here. There is the cinema which has a special night of horror once a week. The movies go all the way from your conventional slasher to the more artsy messed up tales. My friends and I go at least once a month. Needless to say that we are not exactly sensitive to seeing blood. Then we have the occasional carnival with adrenaline inducing rides. A place where we fill our bodies with sugar and grease because nobody's parents tell them to have a healthy diet. We have no rules when it comes to living. Not really. Of course, there are less gruesome things to do too. Like going to the three stories high bookstore, visiting the mall, or trying out different sports in the community club. The bookstore is where I met California about five months ago. Cal was new to town. A son of a former Drenfield family that tried to get away. Cal's mom was chosen as a hunter, she received the letter all the way across the sea. I don't know if she said no or what exactly happened. It is something he doesn't like to talk about, all I know is that both of Cal's parents are dead now. After the family got blood on their hands despite trying to get away, his grandparents decided to move back with him. After all, at least now the possibility was smaller that Cal would be chosen. Wanna watch a movie? Tess and the others are going. Cal and I would usually hang out alone, just as we did that evening. Just chilling at my home, playing Nintendo. He rolled his eyes. Of course they are. Shouldn't they have seen every fucking movie by now? Needless to say, Cal wasn't too fond of my friends. Well not everyone is such a wuss as you, you can't even watch Coraline, I joked. Cal was the only person I'd ever met who was scared of horror movies. It's one of the reasons my friends didn't like him very much when I introduced him for the first time. He was just too different in all the wrong ways, according to them. It was quite the opposite for me. I thought it was fantastic to meet a person that grew up somewhat normal. At least I'm not a psychopath, he responded eyes glued to the screen in front of us. He said it in such a harsh tone it almost made me feel judged too but then he turned over slightly and grinned. I didn't really care that much what my friends thought of him. Honestly, 
they could be a bit over the top at times anyway. They are the kind of friends you have because you grew up together. Although not all of them were that bad. Tess was a bit too nosy. She questioned Cal about his parents two minutes after she met him. Hence, he kinda likes her the least. Joe and Mel are the more introverted ones of the group. I probably get along best with Mel. I think she used to have a little crush on me when we were younger. And then there is Marcus who is the cousin of Tess. He is probably the most unpredictable one. Ranging from overly friendly to borderline aggressive. A fun mixture of individuals I would say. You might think Cal would fit in too but there just seems to be a wall between their personalities. I'm what you'd call someone who always chooses the middle. I usually get along with everyone just fine but never intensely well. That is until Cal came along which is probably why I was even more scared for him than I was for myself. On the day that we heard the announcement. There were letters coming in. A new round of a hunt and it could hit any of us. This would be the third time that I would witness one. I hardly knew any of the hunters or prey of the last ones except for one. Never imagined my elementary school teacher to be a cold-blooded murderer. She was more the kind of woman to encourage you to draw rainbows and who wore those big hippie glasses and colorful skirts. Well, people can surprise you. The letters would come that evening and I spent it over at Cal's. I almost felt as nervous as his grandmother who kept tapping her long nails on the wooden kitchen table. Luca, Han, shouldn't you be at home as well? Let's pray they won't but your family might receive a letter as well. My great grandfather on dad's side had been hunted. My grandma on mum's side was once a hunter. I had never met either. They passed away before I was born but it meant that chances were low that a member of my family would be picked. The same family as not chosen often. I'll go in a bit, I lied, knowing I would wait until after 8 when the letters are shoved under the doors. The ticking of the clock in the kitchen was only occasionally interrupted by the nails of Cal's grandmother. Other than that, we were all quiet. Cal somehow seemed the calmest. And then it happened. The hand of the clock moved to 1 minute past 8. There was no letter. I expected to see Cal smile but his expression didn't change a bit. It's not me but it doesn't mean it's not happening, he said at the door before I left. The chances of being chosen as a member of society under the age of 25 are high. Sometimes older ones get assigned but very seldom. For some unspeakable reason, young people kill and get murdered more often here. Still, I wasn't expecting to be either of those. It didn't make sense with the probabilities but I assume I miscalculated. Because when I came home, the letter was waiting for me and both of my parents were crying. Another month of death was about to be initiated. That is the time the hunters have to murder the prey. Each one receives an individual list of victims. They may decide to kill them all but they have to choose at least one. They can also decide to let them live for the month and remove them on the last day or start on the first morning of the killing month. Again, it depends on people's preferences. I don't think either option is that great though. For some, the first day is used for the prey to start running. To a different city, to a different country. If they choose to run, they will be dead before the last night of the month. No exceptions. If they take their chances and stay they might not be picked by a hunter. As you might be able to tell I'm quite interested in probabilities. They are not often in my favor though as I started to learn. I didn't tell any of my friends about my letter. Not even California. I figured they would find out soon enough. The month begins exactly three days after the letters are handed out which meant I still had at least three days. Even before the official start, the festivities are initiated. Yeah, you heard right. It is almost like Halloween. People start decorating their homes. Many start throwing parties, people dress up in masks and costumes. It's all very morbid but people don't want to appear as if they are against the system. They know there's no way to change it either way so they might as well go all in. If an outsider came to town, they'd probably just think we're very whimsical. So do I need to clean your blood off the streets anytime soon? Cal joked as we walked to school next to each other. He still had no idea. Normally I would have made some joke but that morning I didn't really feel like it. I hadn't slept one minute the night before. I could tell that he knew something was up but he didn't push it. At the entrance, we split up. He went to chemistry and I made my way to biology class. People had started drawing slurs on lockers, in bloody print. I'm coming for you first, asshole. Do you still think I'm that fat? Better watch out. Are you in? Some people fear the day that a letter may come in. Some of Drenfield's people however wait their whole life to be picked as a hunter. In class, I sat down next to Mel. She looked almost worse than me. Eyes bloodshot. Legs shaking nervously. At least that's what I thought at first. Fuck, did you get a letter, Mel? 
I whispered. She looked at me with an empty expression in her eyes, but then her thin lips grew into a massive grin. I sure did, she giggled. Then she proceeded to open her bag to show me what she was hiding inside. Knives, brass knuckles, and a rope. I know I'm supposed to make it look like suicides, she rolled her eyes and laughed again. I got up from my seat and left class. I didn't look back until I made it to the exit of the school. She said suicides. She wasn't planning on killing only one. She was going to enjoy being a hunter. I kept walking all the way home, trying to ignore all the gory decorations on people's homes. Some even put up real animal cadavers it seemed. Just in front of our house, I stumbled into our neighbor's daughter, Clara. She smiled when she saw me. Clara was only eight but incredibly smart and unbelievably sweet. Hey, Luca. Are you excited? She asked. I shook my head. Aw, why not? Uncle Toby is. You know he got chosen even though he is way old. She giggled. Did he now? She nodded. He is making a special room for them with toys and everything. One that locks from inside. I swallowed. It seemed that the hunters were overly excited this season. Cal came over that evening. Unannounced. He wanted to know why I wasn't in school even though we went there together this morning. I just sat there, in my bed. I had no idea how to tell him. But I didn't need to, he could tell. You got a letter. I couldn't even remember the last time I'd cried but at that moment I couldn't hold back anymore. Fuck. The following days went by like a fever dream. My friends kept calling and texting, asking me to hang out and I ignored all of them. Especially Melly even though she was the most persistent. She couldn't wait for a moment together alone which clearly wasn't happening. Not after I saw the bloodthirst in her eyes. I already knew Mel was a hunter, and I knew of our neighbor Toby. I also knew who was picked for prey but I tried to shut it out. There wasn't much time left though, the hunt would officially begin tonight at 12. That evening, Mel stood in front of my house. Lucy, come out to play. Don't be a bore. I stood behind the window, the second our eyes met, I felt like throwing up. Finally, though, I opened the door. Fuck off, Mel. She frowned her eyebrows in a playful way. I thought we were friends, Luca. There were only 15 minutes left. All right, come inside. We'll talk. She ran all the way, probably afraid that I might change my mind. Inside she slammed the door shut. Geez, Mel, my parents are upstairs, I lied. My parents had left town that morning, they said they couldn't be here to witness it and I couldn't exactly blame them. I know why you're hiding, you're scared, she said in a playful voice. But you don't have to be. You know Marcus is on the list? He can be such an asshole sometimes. Her hand was holding a kitchen knife. One of those that could probably cut through glass. I tried to stay confident but my palms were sweating like crazy. You don't have to do this, Mel. You're not like that. You're... Nice? Sweet? Fuck off, Luca. You never actually cared about me, but now for once, we can mean something. Of course I care about you. You're one of my best friends. She rolled her eyes. Well if we're such great buddies, why didn't you tell me about your letter? I gulped. Because I don't want to be a part of this. She shook her head. Oh, Lucy, you know you have no choice right? And as she said those words, the first announcement started blasting all over town. Beloved members of Drenfield, there are only five minutes left. Five minutes. She held up the knife and raised an eyebrow. It's almost time. It was getting loud outside. People were on the street, cheering and laughing. It was almost like some festival. As the noises started getting louder, I finally took my chance and grabbed the knife from her hand. Her eyes opened wide with excitement but before she could do anything, Cal surprised her from behind. He had been upstairs in my room this whole time. He slung his arms around her while I got the rope. Then we locked her in the bathroom. It wasn't the best plan but what else were we supposed to do? Are you ready? Cal asked and I nodded. We grabbed the bags from my room and made our way outside to his car. At that moment the public announcement started blasting through town. Hunting season has now officially begun. We proudly announce our newest hunters. Abigail Morrow, Ronnie Elizen, Melanie Smith, Tobias Gordon, and Luca Anderson. Our list of prey is long this year. Please help our hunters the best you can to wipe out Gina Senna, Marcus. I didn't need to hear the rest. I knew all the names. I had received the names of prey with my invitation to be a hunter. Something I knew I would never be able to become. No matter the price. 
Nobody stopped us. Why would they? I was the one that was supposed to be hunting after all. We left the godforsaken town but if you paid attention you know that it won't help me, I'm only stalling for time. A hunter must hunt or soon they will become prey themselves. I suppose I didn't outrun my fate, it only got delayed. As I said, death isn't exactly bound to borders.